This video will explain how to rig a character, which is setting up the controls to be able to animate a character in 3ds Max. So I have a, a quadruped kind of character, and I'm going to show you how to, in this video, set up the, the joint system or the bones. Uh, and then in the next video we will talk about how to scan the character, which is applying the geometry to the bones uh, so that the bones will animate or move uh, and then the geometry will move and deform with that. Okay, so first thing uh, we like to set up is uh, some layers in order to make things look easier for you to be able to organize your scene. So I have a geometry layer. What I'm going to do is come in here and create a new layer. Okay, if that's a little subset layer, I can always move that. Uh, we're going to call this one joints. You can call it bones as well. That one also does not really matter. So I'm going to create all my bones in this bones joints layer. I'm going to create a couple other layers later for the controls, for the IK handles and things like that when we get to the, the control setup as well. Okay, so what I should, I'm going to do first is actually go ahead and I'm going to freeze my geometry. But before I do that, I'm going to make my body semi-transparent by holding Alt-X. So that allows me to see through my body. And then now when I freeze all my geometry, I can be able to see through it, but also not worry about selecting it and messing it up by any chance. Okay, so there's two ways to access the bone tools. If you go to the command pin on the right, uh, there's the systems. And then here's the bones right here. You don't get all of the setup options underneath the bone tools. That's what we do uh, with the animation menu. But this at least allows you to be able to click and create bones. So the other way to access this is underneath the animation tools, bone tools. So with this setup, it pulls up a, a new window. And here's my create bones tool, which is the same as if I find it in the command panel. But I also have a lot of other tools that we'll be using today. Okay, so when I'm creating any kind of bone system, I'm going to start with the base of the body. Work my way out to the extremities. So what I'm going to do is start with the... The torso will move to the side view, and any kind of character's motion uh, and anatomy should be or have the basis of some kind of real world uh, character or uh, organism. So, even though this isn't a full human character, we're going to still treat it with the same similarities as what our body would have with bones and muscle structure and movement. So, we're going to start with the pelvis, and that's going to be our base joint. We always start with the base and end with the bone creation with the end joints. So you probably are not going to get good results if you start to create bones in the perspective view. Even though if you line this up and you start creating bones, uh, they are actually off in the middle of nowhere uh, because it creates bones within the confinements of the horizontal grid space in the perspective view. So let's go to the side view again, hit L on the keyboard. And with the Create Bones tool, if I click on a bone, or click to create a bone, uh, here's how the system works. Uh, you actually create the joints, this is why my layer I named it joints instead of bones, because I'm actually creating the joints and then the bones are created between the joints. So wherever you click first is going to be the base joint, wherever you click last is going to be the child joint. Um, so it's a, a parent to child linking hierarchy system. So when I click a couple times I can right click to get out of the bone tool. If I move that base joint it moves everything. If I try to move joints underneath that, it will move the joints underneath that. But here's another tip is that you should never move a bone that is not a base joint. So only move base joint bones. Uh, all other bones should be rotated. That's how our body moves and we're of a natural motion for just about any kind of character or creature in our real world. So bones should be rotated other than the base joint. Uh, that can be moved. Also that joint can be scaled as well. Uh, when you scale that base joint, it scales everything, so you don't really need to scale all the rest of the joints. If you want to scale the size of the visual joint, we can show you, uh, we can change that within the uh, bone tools as well. Okay, so the bones look like um, the really four-sided cubes that are tapered. Uh, the thicker end is going to be where the base of the joint is, the thinner end is where the tip of that joint is. So it is a linking hierarchy system. The base joint moves and rotates everything. Underneath that, all of the other joints are rotated and parented underneath the joint above that. 
Okay, so create joints based off of orthographic views like the left side, uh, front, top views. Okay, so we're always going to start with the base, and we're going to create kind of a natural S curve, similar to how our bone system works. Pelvis is located near the back where our spine system is, so this character actually will have uh, the root belt pelvis joint back here, the back legs. But I'm just going to start with the front of the body as if this was a human character, and then I'll add the other joints later. Okay, so I'm going to create one, maybe having a wireframe on my help as well. A joint right about here, and then I'm just going to work my way up. So how many spine joints we need depends on the motion and how fluent the character's body needs to bend. So we don't actually need the same exact amount of bones that we have in our actual system, our human system. So about five to ten, depending on the level of fluidity of the motion that's needed. So I'm just going to start creating some up here. I don't want to go all the way to the corner, but I'm going to create a couple. We get up here to the neck area, and I'm going to create one major one for the neck. I can always come back and refine that later. And I'm going to go to the center of the head. And that's going to be where my head joint's going to be. So right now, I'm just going to right click, and that stops the joint, but it creates like an end nub joint on there. So that's going to be my joint system. I'm going to quickly go and rename all of this. Name as you go, that's always a good suggestion. Uh, each naming system can be different, but as long as you understand what they are, uh, then it will be helpful. So I'm going to name this pelvis and then spine one, two, and then we'll have here. Just going to the scene explorer and naming it this way. So this one's going to be my neck joint. You can even add like J in front of it for joint and then neck. So then that way all of your joints will have J to start with. Maybe in your geometry you can do capital G um, for geometry, then we can do C for controls, and then so forth down the line with organization. Okay, so you do want to make sure either your character is already in the center of the grid, it's like from the front view, the character is in the center of the grid, or that you move your joint system, so you have to do just select the base joint, move that around. So I'm going to temporarily hide uh, my geometry layer, and what I'm going to do is show you some of the uh, ways we can adjust our joint system. Let's go back to the bone tools. So I'm going to do first is just colorize the joints and I have to use drag select everything. There's the apply gradient. If you just select just one joint then you can colorize just one joint. But if you want to colorize your entire joint system all you have to do is uh, go to the gradient and then the start color is going to be the base color. So we'll do kind of a bright red and orange. And then the end color is going to be the child so let's do a yellow. And then we'll do apply gradient. So that way you can kind of see the colors apply onto that joint system. Kind of an easy way to organize things in a visual standpoint. The spine could be warm colors, red and oranges. The right arm can be green. The left arm can be blue. So that no matter what angle you're at, you can always kind of see uh, the, you know, the right joints or which side of the body you're on. Okay, so what if I want to add another joint in here? So maybe sometimes we can add another neck joint. If I have a joint selected, I can choose the refine option. And wherever I click in between those two joints is where it's going to add that next joint. So it actually added this next bone in here. So I can call this one neck two. Let's rename the head there. Okay, so if you do not want a joint, if you do not want another joint, all you have to do, uh, or a joint that's already in there, you can choose remove bone. Or you can choose delete bone. So let's go back down here to this one and say, well, I don't want this joint right here. I'll just choose delete. So it does two different things. The remove bone tries to keep the hierarchy, doesn't break the hierarchy. So this head joint is now uh, still connected to the body. But if I choose delete bone, that creates two different joint systems now. So you just kind of be careful which one you choose. So we're going to come back and talk about connect and mirror. Uh, so what about if I need to move a bone? I'm going to turn my geometry layer back on. What if I don't like the placement of this neck bone? Uh, what I can do is go to bone edit mode and be able to adjust the placement of the bone. I never want to move a bone that is linked to another joint because it will mess with the joint below that as well. 
so I can rotate, but it doesn't allow me to move it to where I would like it to be. So here's where the bone edit tools comes into play. If I click bone edit tools, I can come move this back how I'd like it to be to add a more fine position for that. When I'm done editing that position, all I have to do is turn off bone edit mode and I get right back to the same rotational movement point of view that I was at earlier. So bone edit mode is good for adjusting the positions of bones. So maybe this one's too far back. So I can come in here and move this. I never suggest rotating in bone edit mode. You can, but uh, it can create undesirable effects as well. Okay, so we're going to go to the front view. Uh, the palms are facing out and the arms are down, which means the elbow is going to be bending up in this character's point of view. So what I'm going to do is start creating the extremities. So the shoulder position might need to be adjusted from time to time as we get to the skinny, but we're just going to click from the front view, wherever we think the, the shoulder should be, so maybe up a little more. And we always want to create a, a natural bend for the elbow so that when we get to what's called the inverse kinematics, we can already have the joint rotation set up. So I don't want to put this directly in the center. I want to put this slightly lower so that I create a natural bend for the elbow to begin with. So I'm going to pull it down a little bit. Our elbow kind of bends from the back of our body as well. Anyway, so I'm also then going to go back up to the wrist so that I already have this natural bend. Uh, so it goes down and then goes out. So that it, we're telling the system and the control rig which angle to bend the elbow. Because the elbow only rotates on one axis, not multiple, but multiple one uh, axis. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is create the fingers. I'm going to create some carpal bones. Before I do anything, anything else, so I don't actually need to create all of the joints within my wrist, but I'm going to create one right here. And then I'm going to move up to uh, the wrist or the finger. So we're as a character only has three fingers. I'm going to move up to the first knuckle, and then we're just going to continue moving along here. And then the last one, I'm going to create one on the end. And then I'm going to right click. So that's going to create an end up. This end up isn't needed for the finger, so I just need to delete that. So I'll show you how to connect bone systems together. We create another bone system for the finger. All I'm going to do is click where the knuckle is for my second finger and then move on down for the other positions. Delete that end joint again. And then I'm going to go through and do the same thing for my thumb. My thumb only has two, two major joints. Delete that end one. So how do I get the fingers to connect it to my wrist bone? How I have it. So let me right click to get out of the bone edit tools. What I want to do is select that wrist joint, and then I'm going to choose the connect bones option. So when I do that, it allows me to have a dotted line that says connected from this point of view. So I'm not selecting my kind of connect bone uh, from my purple bone here. Instead, I'm going to select my wrist bone there because it creates a dotted line to the end or the base, or not the base, the tip of this joint. So I'm going to click on, let's do this one first. And what that's going to do is create a connect bone in between those two systems. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'll select the wrist, connect bone, and then click on the thumb. So it creates that connect bone for me and links everything up correctly. Let's minimize for us. Just close my bone edit tools for a second. Let's go to my perspective view. So it did a pretty decent job, but it is going to put the uh, joints in the center of the grid, which isn't exactly the location I want it to be. So I want to move it up to the center of the fingers arm in general. And then my fingers need to be rotated back a little bit here. So here's my thumb. The center of my thumb's okay, but I have my fingers modeled closer to bending backwards some. I'm going to change my coordinate system to local. Under view. So it's local there. So let's actually go to the base joint down here to rotate it back from the connect joint. I might also want to go into my bone edit tools and then bone edit mode, just move this back some so it's in the center of the thumb. That looks pretty good. Okay, so then I would name all of these joints before I mirror this over. But one other thing I want to do is connect this to one of my spine joints. So I never want to do this to the neck so I don't want my neck to rotate and my arms rotate with it. But I want to do this to one of the spine joints near this. So let me turn off my geometry for a second. So let me select this joint right here, and it's going to connect it to the top of this joint. So I'll choose Connect, and then I'm going to just click on my shoulder joint. That should connect everything for me. 
And what if I want kind of a natural color bone like motion? What I'm going to do is click on this bone, which is my connect bone, or what will be my color bone, and choose refine. And I'm just going to click in the middle. So that now with my bone edit tools, I can turn my geometry layer back on. And let's select this bone right here, which will be my color bone. And move that all the way up. Now this isn't completely necessary for all characters, but to allow for more natural shoulder motion, the color bone definitely helps out for that. I don't actually have to create shoulder blades and tar bones for those as well. Uh, it can help, but it's not completely necessary. Okay, so before I would actually mirror this over, I'm going to uh, name everything, but we'll come back and mirror over the arms and legs here in a minute uh, after I get the legs set up. Okay, so leg setup is going to be a lot easier if we have uh, the body from a side point of view. So if my hand bone might get in the way, that'll be okay. Uh, I can always move this bone here in a little bit, but I'm just going to click uh, roughly right here, and I can move that pelvis bone forward a little bit from where the hip's going to be. So I want to do the same thing I did for the arms for the legs. I want to have a forward rotation. My leg has already bent in this angle, but I want to go ahead and make sure that my bulk system knows exactly what angle to bend that knee. The knee is a hinge joint as well. So I'm going to create a bone for the knee closer to the front, and then we'll go right back to the center of the ankle. This character's feet are somewhat set up like humans, uh, where I'm going to have a ball for my uh, foot up here, and then I'm going to have different joints for each toe. So probably what I want to do uh, is, maybe let's do the center toe right now. Let's go to this point and then one to the end. Okay, so here's another way that we can edit bones. Let me turn the geometry off for one second, but you can notice that the bones are really large down here. Let's delete that end bone. Okay, so with bones selected, if you move to the modifier tab, or if you go over here where it says the fin adjustments tools, you can adjust how large the bones are with the width and height, and then also add fins, which gives the bones a distinct look to them other versus other areas of the system. Let's just minimize some things for a second. Okay, so this bone uh, is really large. Before we do anything else, my uh, joint system I just created for the leg is in the center of the grid, so I do need to move this over. Uh, let's see, let's just push, push this here all the way to the center of the leg, and maybe go to the front view and just make sure. Some adjustments to it later. That looks pretty good. Okay, so let's open up my bone tools again because uh, my hip isn't exactly way down here. So let's go back to bone edit mode and let's just move this bone in a little bit. It's okay if this has a slight angle to it as long as that knee angle is more than any other angle that's there. Okay, let's turn off bone edit mode. Okay, so what if I want to come change the size of some of these joints? pretty easily go to the modifier tab and just tone down the size of the width and the height for the, each bone. I'm just doing one for each of these. Maybe my ankle is going to be two. So that way we can kind of see where these bones are going to be located. Okay, let's rotate this one. I'm going to rotate this in one back so it kind of follows. Let's move this up. This one's going to be down some. Here we go. So rotate to the side as well a little bit just to make sure. I want to open up my bone edit tools again. And then just move this over just a little bit. Okay, so then I can create the rest of my bones. Uh, perhaps from a top view, what I can do is come here and just click a couple times. Then I can always make adjustments to this later. Okay, they're really large. I just created the end ones. I'm not connecting it yet, but let's just go ahead and scale these down. And then with my connect tool, let's go back to uh, where my let me move them up first. You can also scale them individually here. Let's do local scale so it shouldn't distort the shape of it as much. So it is important that things are lined up so that it does distort the geometry correctly. These still might not might even be really large. Let's do 0.5 for 
width and height of the mold tools. Yeah, that works. Okay, so with the connect ball, let's go back and select uh, really what's going to be my angle ball, and then let's go to connect, and then connect my balls up here. Connect again. Okay, my balls might be really large. This is 2.5 for all of these. Okay, so let's turn off the geometry layer for a second. Let's talk about the fins. Oops, I did the wrong thing. Let's so turn the joints, turn the geometry off. I also want to turn down my size for my ankle, or is it really my knee? Excuse me. Okay, that's a little better. So I can also go turn or turn down the size for all of my hand joints as well. Just like most of them. It's also under the bone tools. Let's do two for all of that. Okay, so let's select my spine joints, and sometimes it's nice to make some joints visually look different. And we can do that with the fin adjustments tool. So if I turn on side fins, I can make them appear maybe more like actual spine joints. And I can also do, let's do front fins as well. Do back fins also. You can also determine the size of each, uh, taper of each as well. So this way my spine joints will visually look different than the rest of my joints. So I can know also with color that they are completely different. Okay, I'm going to come back and name everything here in a minute. But first off, let's actually, I want to refine my, my pelvis joint here. Because if I try to connect this, it's connected to my spine joint above that. Which isn't exactly what I want. I want to connect it to a little bit lower. So let's do refine. I'm just going to click a little bit lower. Let's going to create a kind of pelvis, uh, second pelvis bone. We call some pelvis two, or I can just call this one spine A, since I already named everything spine one through whatnot. Uh, so my pelvis stays where it is. So what I want to do is select my pelvis now, and then now with my connect bone, it allows me to connect it to really the top of the pelvis, which is exactly where I want that to be. I can go ahead and turn off my fin adjustments here. I don't want that to be there for my leg bones. Let's turn this size down as well. Okay, so uh, we can also colorize the arms and legs. So let's just drag, select everything, and then let's go as far as for the arm, and then let's go, let's say the right arm, the right side is going to be green, the left side is going to be blue. So we're going to do a green to uh, maybe even like a yellow green, just to show the color difference and apply gradient. Let's do the leg the same way. Okay, so that way I'll know when I mirror everything over that uh, this is going to be my right side versus my left side. Okay, so how do you uh, mirror something over? We're selecting all of the joints for the arm, including the connect bone that's connecting to the spine. Won't work properly unless you actually have the bone that is connected to the spine selected. So then now with the mirror tool, Click mirror on the selected joints and make sure you're on the right axis. So it was on the right axis with X, but just change the axis. It should mirror everything over exactly how it should. So it's the layers panel again, turn on geometry. So everything should be exactly the correct position as what it was over there. So it looks pretty good. So let's turn off the geometry for a second. Okay, so what I can do is colorize the, these joints, so since I said blue earlier, to make it a little easier for me to see left versus right, no matter what occasion I'm at. To do the same thing for the leg. Okay, so I'm going to select all the bones, bones, including the one that's connected to the pelvis. Mirror, everything should be in the right location. Then let's just recolorize it. Okay, so that's pretty much it for for the main body part here, other than if you have specific uh, things like eyes or a mouth or whatnot. So I'm going to create the back legs uh, in the same way that I did the front legs. 
I'm going to link everything up and I'm also going to rename everything. We'll come back and I will talk about uh, the mouth and the eyes and the other accessories. So we're going to pause right here. Okay, so that wraps up the body uh, joints. So the only other thing I wanted to show you is the the option for facial joints as well. We're just going to do a very basic facial system here, which is just the jaw and the eyes. So I'm going to do is create uh, new bones. So bone edit mode. Uh, so relatively, our uh, our jaws uh, rotate from right underneath where our ears are, because characters' ears are much more exaggerated. But what we can do is just click and drag relative to where we want the jaw to start off with the back, and then I'll click where the the chin is, and then I'm just going to right click, because that end joint can be there, that's fine. Oops. So what I'm going to do is actually go to bone edit mode, let's just move this back some. Not too much, we don't want to go through the, the spine joints there. Okay, so for the eyes, what I'm going to do is come here and create a bone where the center of the eye is going to be. So it's maybe something around here. And then one where the tip of the eye is going to be the end. And I can right click because I don't need this extra bone. So let's just delete that one. Okay, so I don't need my, uh, my body visible right now. So let's just turn that off. But what I do need to make sure I have is my jaws lined up right. I'll at least be in the center. I don't need to have a joint for each side of the jaw unless I'm doing some very specific mouth shape or, or dialogue where I need to kind of roll the, the jaw on its side. What I do need to make sure is that the eye joint is in the center of the eye. So let's hit Alt-A to the quick align tool. And let's unfreeze the geometry. I want to freeze this or excuse me, align this to the eye there. So let's do pivot and pivot, it's fine. And this needs to be up a little bit or back a little bit, so something like that. And that can always be adjusted later. Um, but that eye joint needs to be in the center of where the eye geometry is, and where the rotational point for the eye is going to be. Okay, so now I can select uh, my, my head bone here, and we can go connect and connect that to uh, that eye. And we're just going to copy this over to the mirror setting again. So let's do mirror, and that should float it over directly to the center of the other eye. It's a little off, so what we'll do is delete this joint, and then Alt-A to quick align that to the correct location of that eye. Move that back a little bit. And then now we can connect this bone correctly. So other ones like this character's 
uh, antennas. Uh, we would have joints in those as well. And I would create those the same way I would do the arms. So then I could colorize the, the facial joints as well. I did want to mention that I have uh, colorized all the joints. So I can understand green is right, blue is left. The spine will be warm in colors. I also did name everything. So the naming system can be different, but what I did, since this character has a front and a back spine, or front and back legs, I did a capital B for the back spine areas and capital B for the back legs. So like the, the right back hip is capital R, capital B, hip. So I can just shorten instead of having to type out right, left, bottom, and top, and whatnot. Capital R for right, capital L for left, uh, then capital B for back. So it's just kind of, it's kind of an easy way to do that. So it is important to name everything here. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this video of uh, discussing how to create a joint system uh, to be able to rig a character properly for animations. So the next video we'll talk about uh, skinning and then attaching the geometry also through linking anything like the eyes or the teeth that don't actually need to deform. They can be linked, but something like the body here will need to be skinned so it will deform properly. Alright, that'll be it for this video.